Hello, bravs. The second half of this book, the chapters are much shorter, but I believe this is the longest chapter in the second half of the book. But since obviously been sick and I've lagged behind and it's already a week before Halloween and I have just totally fallen off the radar, let's get on with chapter 15 before I go to work. An eternity of time and distance elapsed during the few seconds in which Dr. Ambrose switched on the tape recorder and several inches of blank tape ran off the spindles. Then came the commands I remembered him giving me, and for a moment it was almost as if my chair had become suspended again. His hand on mine brought me out of this compulsion to re-enter the hypnotic state. As the tape reeled off new commands, words I couldn't recall now, that had been that had taken me down the steep grade into hypnosis. You are deep, deeply asleep. Your eyes are closed tight, tight, so tight you cannot open them, even if you want to. No matter how hard you try, you cannot open your eyelids. They seem glued together. You cannot open them. Go ahead and try. There was a pause, then he resumed. You see, you tried, but you couldn't. You are sinking deeper and deeper. Now when I tell you, I want you to. Hello, Doc. Fooled you, didn't I? A blithe, impish voice broke in. You thought you had me hypnotized, didn't you? Were you going to call me out? Well, I didn't want to wait for you to do that because I wouldn't want you to think for a moment, for a minute, that you can work that hocus pocus stuff on me. On Branwyn, yes. On me, uh uh. I come and I go as I please. No, that's not right. That's what I'd like to do, but I have to wait for Branwyn to go to sleep or be tired. We're upset about something, so her control isn't good. That's why I play tricks on her. They send her into a tailspin, and then it's easy to get out. You did fine, just fine, the way you put her down. I wish I knew how to do that. Would you teach me? No, I can see you won't. Well, maybe I can make you change your mind later on. For now, let's just talk. I've been itching to talk to you ever since she started therapy. Then you're not Branwyn? She laughed lightly. Do I look like that droop? Branwyn's no droop, I heard him say. She just has a lot of things bothering her right now. You, for one, it's not very nice of you, you know. It's not very nice of her to keep me cooped up all the time either. Come on, Doc. Compared to me, she's a droop. Can't you see that? No, no. Don't look at my belly. That's her fault. Look at my eyes, my lips. I know how to use them, don't I? Don't waste them on me. I'm much too old, his voice rasped. I shot a glance at him as he listened and saw a knot working in his cheek. Just because your hair's white, I think that's distinguished. You're not flabby like that, Senator. When he started to take off his clothes and I saw the folds of fat hanging over his girdle, I said to myself, uh-uh, not for me. So I left him to Branwyn. Besides, I never meant to get serious with him anyway. It was sort of a game, him being a Senator and all that, but you... I could get other ideas about you, not like Branwyn. You know what you are to her, a father figure. That's not very flattering, is it? Well, that's the way she is. Romantic, yes, very. But sexy, she'd rather curl up with a book. Poor Alan. That's what made it so easy for me to take over. But I overplayed that one. She caught wind of me, and well, she's not dumb, you know. She made Alan feel like he was on a honeymoon again, and that was bad for me. But just you wait until she has the baby. She'll get involved with that, along with her books, of course, and I'll have my lover back again. Isn't Alan your husband? Me? Married? I wouldn't tie myself down. Oh, Alan's a doll, but I want to be free. I want to enjoy life, to go places, to dance, to have people all around me, to touch, 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 everyone and everything. She must have tried to rise and cavort around the room as I heard the chair scrape and thud. Damn, this thing is my st in my stomach's heavy, she exclaimed. I don't know why she had to go get pregnant again. It's bad for my figure. How do you know it's not your baby? You think I can't count? Don't worry. I was careful. A baby would definitely cramp my style. Don't you agree, Doc? The tape rustled past during a long pause. Then his voice again, strained and circumspect. You haven't told me your name. That's right. I haven't, have I? And I suppose that's not fair since I know yours, Dr. Ambrose. Perhaps I do know your name already. Are you Rhiannon? Her laughter rippled like water dripping onto shelf rock. No, I just used that name to tease her. It started as a joke, but Alan liked it, and it worries her. 
which gives me more chance to get out. Hey, big man, don't keep moving away. I won't bite. I just want to touch you to run my fingers the length of your long, strong hands. They're so beautifully shaped, so sensitive. They're almost like antennae. Do you think with your hands sometimes? Your name. You still haven't told me your name. You are persistent, aren't you? I was going to keep you guessing for a while, but if you must know, it's Phoebe. Phoebe. Where did you get that name? Out of one of Branwyn's myth books, I considered Aphrodite for a while. She had a lot of things going for her, you know. Can't you just see me rising out of the sea on a shell? But Aphrodite was too long, and Venus sounds corny, so I took Phoebe. It means bright moon, and I thought that was very that was pretty. How long have you been around? Now, big man, would you be asking my age? I don't mind. I'm younger than she is anyway, by several years, I think. All of a sudden, I was just there, but I was more a part of her than, and yet not entirely. I remember things she did as if I was always there looking on. I saw Rhiannon die. We're so different. It seems like I was made up out of parts Bramwyn didn't use for her personality. The best parts, I say. I do run on, don't I? But it's so seldom I ever get to talk to anyone. Here, turn this way. That dimple in your cheek. Here, just below your right eye. That's a wrinkle, he growled. Sit down, Phoebe. I'm talking this. I'm taking this all down on tape. But you're a doctor, she protested lightly. You can't tell on me. Nevertheless, I'm going to ask you to let me play this back to Bramwyn. Why? I could almost see her pouting. I like things the way they are. I can pick her brains, but she never knows what I'm thinking. That way I can play tricks on her. Exactly. And you've caused her a lot of harm, both mentally and physically. Unless I can make her understand what's going on, something terrible might happen to her. You mean like suicide? For the first time, there was a hint of fear in her voice. She came close to it once. You don't have to tell me. She really had... She really had me scared that time. She's also got me scared as I'm coughing up phlegm. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through this. It wasn't like her running out in the fog like that. I don't know what made her do it. At times, it seemed like she was hanging back. As hard as I was trying to hold her back, that someone else was trying to get her to jump, but I didn't see anybody. She kept talking in a crazy way as if there were, as if there were, though. What's that mean? She kept talking in a crazy way as if there were, though. She was in a terrible state. You can hardly blame her, Phoebe, after the things you told her. Things? What things? Didn't you say you smothered her first baby? Why would I say that? She was going on about something like that, but I thought she'd flipped. I wouldn't have hurt Timmy, even if he was a bother. All those smelly diapers, but they were her problem, not mine. He was a cute little fellow. Why would I want to kill him? And didn't you tell her that you'd gone to bed with the painter and that she'd have a black baby? No, at least I don't remember saying that. Well, did you? Did I what? Take the painter to bed, like Alan. No. Her tone was emphatic. Do you always tell the truth, Phoebe? I'm telling the truth now. But do you always to Branwyn? Of course not, she confided blithely. It's so much fun to make up things, to see what lies. I can make her believe. They just seem to bubble out, I mean. I'll be inside, waiting for a chance to come out, and all of a sudden I can resist telling the most delicious fibs. I can't resist telling the most delicious fibs. The worse they are, the more seriously she takes them. I don't know where I got get the ideas or what makes me say such things. They just pop into my head, and afterward I've forgotten all about what I've said. Then you might have made up that story about the painter. I might have, but I don't recall it. It's funny. I always know what she's doing when she's out, and I remember it too, but I don't always remember what I say. Then you could have told her you killed the baby. I, I suppose so. She spoke with obvious reluctance. But if I did, man, I was way out. Why do you enjoy tormenting Branwyn? I told you before, it's not so much that I want to hurt her, but she's so strong-minded that I have to beat her down to get out. It's not fair for her to be in control all the time and for me to have to stay inside. I have my rights too, don't you think? Yes, I do. I knew you'd feel that way. You like me, don't you, big man? Of course I do. You don't think of me as just another Eve Black, do you? I saw the movie too, you know. You wouldn't say Branwyn is like Eve White, would you? Far from it. Well, I won't be treated like Eve Black either, or or that Sally Beecham, whoever she was. 
I'm a whole me. I'm Phoebe. I'm a real person. I can prove it to you. Would you take me out sometime after the baby's born? I mean, I'd be, it'd be a snap. It'd be a snap. You just hypnotize her and we could go dancing or sailing in the moonlight. Oh, big man, please. I've never been asked anywhere just for myself. You don't know what it's like to be what I am. Alan wouldn't know. He'd be out of town. Look at me. Take a good look, big man. There was a pause and then sternly, no, Phoebe, that won't do. I looked up and saw the doctor's heavy brows knitted together. Now be a good girl and sit down. He had switched to cajolery. You're a very attractive young lady. However, there's one thing you must understand. I never become involved with the patient. She was unperturbed or with anyone else for a long time. Have you, big man? Listen, lover, I'm no patient of yours. I'm just somebody you know. He cleared his throat or it might have been static. Seriously, he continued. No, nope, that's the wrong page. See, this is the beauty of not editing. You want to help Branwyn, don't you? He asked. She hesitated. You're still taking this down on tape, aren't you? Yes, I am. No, you want to help Branwyn, don't you? Yes, yes, I suppose. Then don't do anything to destroy the doctor-patient relationship. I told you I'm not your patient. I mean, between Branwyn and me, if you do, I'll have to refer her to another psychiatrist. You wouldn't. Oh, yes, I would. A sigh. All right, then. I'm sorry, Doc. Don't be sorry. I'm flattered. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, I want to ask you again. Did you have an affair with the painter? No, I told you that before. Don't you believe me? I want to very much, and I also want Bramwin to believe that nothing of the sort occurred. It's essential to her health and the babies. Of course I didn't. Do you think I'm nuts? Run the risk of having a bastard that Alan would know wasn't his? Not me. I didn't know that then that we were already pregnant. Well, you weren't, were you? She doesn't think so. But Dr. Gordon suspects she miscalculated that maybe we had a couple of periods after the baby was conceived. Some women do, you know. Then she's due to deliver in January, not February. That's right. And it makes sense. We felt life very early. And look how big I am. I sure hope the doctor's right. And you're positive there was nothing between you and the painter. Absolutely. That's one day I remember well. I spent it cleaning the house. Bramwin makes me so mad, living in her dreams all the time. I swear Alan could drop his coat on the floor and she'd walk right by it and never notice. I like neat things. In other words, as a housekeeper, she leaves something to be desired. Lousy. Oh, don't misunderstand me. She's not dirty. She does a lot of unnecessary things I'd never bother with like rinsing her dishes in soapy water before putting them in the dishwasher. But she's no good at straightening up. Papers, papers. We're going to be drowned in paper someday. And books, too. You enjoy housekeeping? No, I don't. But that's one of those things you can't get off your back. Besides, the other one would get mad at me if I didn't keep things in order. That's understandable for a man. Oh, I don't mean Alan. He's about as untidy as she is. I mean the other one. Didn't you know? There's three of us. Three? Surprise and eagerness ruptured the calm surface of his voice. Are you sure? What's the other one like? I don't know. I can't even tell you her name. If she has one, but she's way deep down inside. I never know what she's thinking. But she knows my thoughts and Bramwin's too. I don't know if she ever gets out. But I don't think so. At least I've never seen her. She's awfully strong-willed, though. I always have to do whatever she tells me to, even if I don't want to. Or she won't let me out. She's the one who's most particular about the house. But I always have to do the work, and I don't think that's fair. Do you know her name? No. I'm not even sure she has one. Could it be Rhiannon? I doubt it. I told you that's my name when I want it to be. No, I mean, have you ever thought this might be the real Rhiannon? Come back from the dead? There was an audible humph. Say, I thought you were a psychiatrist, not a sorcerer. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened to sorcerers. We now go to medical school and become psychiatrists. I could hear her giggle. Seriously, he continued, I have to investigate every facet of the mind. I suppose you do. Well, as far as there being a real Rhiannon, I think it's all in Bramwin's imagination. That's what she gets for reading all those legends and fairy tales. When she sees a tree, she sees dryads and satyrs dancing around it. Me, I see a tree. Why did you tell Alan your name was Rhiannon? Because I knew he would call her that name sometime and scare her out of her wits. Besides, can you imagine what would have happened if he'd used the name Phoebe to Bramwin? 
she would have thought it was some other girl in another body. I mean, and they'd have quarreled and maybe even have split up. And then where would I be? Do you realize that you might cause Bramwin to have a mental breakdown? So then I could take over. Would you want to go to an institution? Because if she goes, you do too. You mean we're all where all the loonies go? Distress was apparent in her voice. I wouldn't like that big man. You know I wouldn't. I'm kept in enough as it is. Or you might drive her to suicide. Then where would you go where then where would you be? What you want is for me just to go back in and stay in like a good girl? Well, I won't do it. That would be kind of suicide, too. No, I'm not asking you to do that. We're going to work out some kind of understanding with Branwyn. I don't know if I like that. I like me as I am. But if you were to merge with Branwyn, you could stay out of all the time. I have an easier answer. Just let me stay out now. She was like a child pleading to delay bedtime. Glad to, if you want to carry the baby around. Oh, I forgot. Damn it. No, I'd rather go back to back in for now. I never was meant for motherhood, but after the baby comes, then what are you going to do with the two of us? Or the three? Forget about her. What about the two of us? Somehow I want to make you two come to terms with each other, but we want such different things. You want the same man. There's a starting point. Alan, I'm not so sure I want him anymore. Not now I've met you. You're much more interesting. I think you could really love a woman if you just let yourself go. You know so much. I'm very ignorant. I just sit at your feet and listen to you tell things, you know, like how the world began and where we came from and why we act like we do. And then I teach you the one thing I know, and that's how to love. Do you think I'd make a good love goddess? How totally disarming this Phoebe was, I thought, as the recorder reeled off his hearty laugh. A dawn creature, simple, direct, amoral, and guileful. Guileful. I think of her now as a disembodied spirit, vexatious, at times yet fascinating. All right, love goddess, he said, let's get back to my earlier question. Would you be willing to have Bramwin hear this tape? It's only fair, you know. You've been listening in on her for a long time. If I refuse, you'll play it to her anyway, won't you? As you said, you're not my patient. Sometimes you don't talk like a doctor, big man. You play according to the rules as long as they serve you. But if need be, you'd bend the laws of man and nature. Isn't that so? There's something about you, as if I'd met you before, in one of Branwyn's books, maybe. Now don't let's get off the track, he brought her back swiftly. I want your answer. I don't see that I have any choice, she replied. I can't refuse you. You know that. Mind you, I'm not too happy about it. Her hearing all this, I mean. She'll be shocked at some of it. You know, and I've rattled off a lot of things I should never have said, but I'd hate to find myself going off a cliff someday or having electric shock treatments. Good girl. Now, what do you know about the real Rhiannon? Enough. I never liked her, although I couldn't get out until after she died. I did observe plenty, and from what I saw and what I've read in Branwyn's mind, Rhiannon was a bitch and deserved everything she got. I wouldn't feel guilty one bit. I can't see why Branwyn does. Best thing she ever did, shutting her up in the freezer. In that freezer, I wouldn't even have tried to rescue her. Rhiannon's death doesn't bother you. Good riddance, I call it. Besides, I got stronger after that. But you never got out until this year. Why was that? Oh, but I did, often, I told you. She just didn't know about it. When was the first time? I don't remember exactly, but it was way before she met Alan. It was hard to do at first. I could only manage to stay out a few seconds. Then... When she was working, I had to be careful because I didn't want to do something that might make her lose her job. I like to eat just like anybody else. Besides, I didn't have as much need to get out then. She and I got around a lot, met people, and had fun and saw things in the world. But after she got married and buried herself in those damn books, I got bored and decided to make a break for it. In those early days, did you ever have any sexual encounters? No. Would you believe it? I was a real innocent kid then. I didn't know what I was missing. Oh, I had feelings, but I didn't understand what they were all about until she was married. He changed the subject. Did you check out Dr. Rubin's book? N no. Phoebe he cautioned as one would a child. All right. Yes, I did. There was defiance in her tone. As a prank? No, it was educational. A lot more interesting than the stuff she reads. And then you wrote the review. I don't remember, honest. I guess maybe I did. I told you lots of things I do go right out of my head afterward. A plaintive note crept into her voice. Are you almost through? I'm getting tired of being out. 
Not that ever. But if all you're going to do is ask questions about my relationship with her, I'm going to be bored. Why can't you just be interested in me? I'm very much interested in you, but not in the right way. There will be other times, won't there? Wistfully. Of course, Phoebe, I'm going to be talking to you often, but this has been enough for today. Ready to go back? I suppose so, with a sigh. Anyway, I'm sick of holding up this big belly. Ouch. The damn thing kicks. Goodbye. Remember, you promised you'd call me out again. Big man, I love. There was a hiatus and then the doctor's voice on the last few inches of tape. Listen to me, Bramwin. I'm going to play this back to you when you awake. Later, I'll give you a transcript of it so you can study it and come to understand it more. It will be a shock to you, I know. Perhaps I could dull the shock post-hypnotically, but that would be like treating appendicitis with morphine. It would kill the pain but leave the disease. You must fight this thing with your own awareness and intellect. I suggest only that nothing about this is irredeemable, irremediable, irremediable, and that you marshal all your resources to meet it. I shall remind you again, after I bring you out of hypnosis, that your case is not hopeless. Now, Bramwin, when I count five, you are to be wide awake. Wake up, Bramwin. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, she's up. And I'm down to, what, 40-some pages? 80s. So, yeah, 40 pages left. That's all, I guess. I must rest before work. And my kid's texting me right now. All right. Goodbye, bruv. Goodbye.